Welcome back to another episode of the Arc Switch Survival Guide. Today, we are going to teach you how to loot beaver dams. Now, beaver dams have tons of really great supplies. They are like a little treasure box for supplies. But the only kicker is the beavers will come and kill you when you mess with them. So today, we are going to teach you how to safely loot beaver dams to get tons of cementing paste, silica pearls, rare flowers, and rare rare mushrooms, and we're also going to show you how to hunt Hesperornis to get organic polymer, which is extremely helpful at our point in the game. So be sure to watch the rest of this episode, and we'll teach you all about that. And we'll show you where we got all the pearls and polymer that we've been using in the last couple episodes. So another thing I love about the location we're going to build our base is it's very close to this big lagoon here where we spent so much time in the last few episodes. And right Right next to this lagoon is a really nice little river delta, and uh, oh look, there are crocodiles, okay cool. Glad we got out of here when we did, because those crocodiles are pretty nasty. So this spot right here is right next to our new base location, and this little river delta is full of all kinds of helpful stuff. And check out this map right here, it's right next to the lagoon we've been hanging out, right at the base of this river, which is just one river over from from where we've been hanging out and where we're putting our next base. And as you can see in the front of my screen here, there is a beaver dam right here on this little island. Also a beaver and a pegomastax. So the first thing I wanna do is get the beaver out of the way. Now, when you open a beaver dam, as soon as you open its inventory, Every beaver in sight will come chasing right after you and immediately start killing you, just like this one down here is. Now, beavers look cute and fluffy, but they are actually really dangerous. They do a ton of damage with those huge teeth of theirs, and they actually are really vicious. They're very persistent, and a lot of times you'll end up with multiple beavers. So as soon as you open that beaver dam, you might have three or four beavers coming at you, and they'll just kill you. I mean, they are bad news. And they're also extremely fast in the water. They move a lot faster in the water than on land. So I'm trying to get this beaver to chase me away from the beaver dam. I scouted this area a little bit and noticed I could only see two beavers in the water down here. So I'm trying to get both of those beavers far away from the beaver dams. And I think this guy may have lost interest. I might have gotten too far away from him. So I'm going to see if I can shoot him across this river. And we're moving and fast forward just because this would be a crazy long episode of just getting beavers to chase us. So I'm going to peck him again and just get him to chase me across this little island. And if I can get him up into these little rock outcroppings, he should get pretty well stuck and just kind of lost back in here. So I'm going to kind of lead him into this little maze. This is where we tamed our Brontosaurus. And as long as he gets back in here, he should totally lose track of us. And we should just be able to leave him here, especially if we go high up into the air. So I think he is pretty well trapped in here. And he's really far away from the beaver dam. He should be well outside of range. But you can see here, he's still chasing us. Whoa, okay, that was really close. He's able to go up slopes pretty well, considering. So, uh, yeah, he's down here. I think he's pretty well trapped at this point. And I'm going to see if I can spot his level and just see if he's a good one to tame. Because I'm looking for a high-level beaver, and it's only level 4. I'm not going to bother with that. So I'll go way up in the air and try to really lose that first beaver. And I think there should be one more beaver out here. But this... We now have a pretty clear shot at this beaver dam, and now it's raining, which makes it a little harder to see. But the other thing right over here, I'm kind of scouting around a little bit, there should be a pegomastax, and I want to kill that thing before I try looting anything, because if he sees me, he could grab whatever I pick up and just run off with it. I hate those little things. Ah, there he is. Hate those little devils. Alright, so let's see if I can just kill this thing. It's a lot better to kill a Pegomastax when you're on your dinosaur, because when they attack you, they don't actually loot anything that way. At least not while I'm dive bombing this way. So I should be able to finish him off just by dive bombing him a bunch. He doesn't do much damage. There we go. Okay, cool. So he is toast, and we got that out of the way. 
And man, there are a lot of Hesperornis around here, so we may have to pick those up later. Okay, so I've got this area clear of predators, and I'm sitting on the ground for a minute just to make sure nothing runs out of the bushes to attack me. And it seems like the coast is pretty clear, but I know there's a beaver right down in the water down there, and he is going to come and attack me as soon as I open this. So I'm going to open that, and then grab some pearls and cementing paste as fast as possibly can, and I should have just seconds to get out of the way. And there he is, yep. Just like clockwork, the beaver's coming to kill me. Now, if there were more beavers around, there could be five or six beavers coming to attack me right now. But I know this is the only other beaver here, and I'm just going to get him to chase me all the way down into those rocks, too. And by doing that, we get both beavers well out of the way and they should actually just leave us alone. Now, if you need pelt, it's actually a good idea to kill beavers to get pelts because they are they spawn in the southern areas and they're pretty easy to get and reasonably easy to kill if you've got uh, you know some good ammunition and some good weapons. But uh, it's really good to get above them where they can't hit you and shoot down on them because they do a lot of damage. A couple, I mean, maybe three or four hits could actually kill you from a beaver. So now that the two beavers are well out of the way, I should have a lot more time to just kind of pick off these uh, beaver dams at my leisure. So I'm just going to hop down, once again scouting to make sure the coast is clear. I opened that and immediately ran back to my pteranodon just in case there's any more beavers I did not see, because a lot of times you'll have one hiding in the water. And I'm not seeing anything dangerous anywhere around, so I think we're in good shape. So I should be able to open these at my leisure. And I'm just going to grab all of the cementing paste and pearls. And now I'm going to use the left trigger to drop all of the wood. And when you've dropped everything out of a beaver dam, it will despawn and disappear. So we'll do the same thing over here, grab all the good stuff, and then the wood is way too heavy to carry. So I'll just use my left trigger to dump it all out and break that other beaver dam. Oh, something's chasing a parasaur, so I'm going to get out of here. And maybe it's just something small because I don't see anything bad. So uh, a beaver dam will not respawn unless you loot everything out of it and then it breaks like that. If you don't do that, the beaver dam will just sit there forever and have nothing good in its inventory and it'll just sit there and not respawn. So that's why I like to break beaver dams and make sure that they're totally broken and then when I come back here next time, there may be some new beaver dams with tons more silica pearls and cementing paste to loot, which is really good. So I attacked that Hesperornis with my pickaxe, which gets me a little bit more organic polymer than my uh, Pteranodon here. But I'm going to go ahead and come over here and loot this next beaver dam here. Because once again, the beavers are far away. And what the hey, this guy's right next to us, so I'll go ahead and uh, get some more organic polymer. These guys are reasonably easy to kill when they're on land. And we're getting a pretty good amount of organic polymer from them. And that stuff is really useful. We'll be using it as a substitute for regular polymer. And that means we can make a lot of stuff that we would not normally be able to make without obsidian and making regular polymer using that obsidian. So this keeps us from having to go really far down to the middle of the map to get obsidian off the mountains. And uh, we can just loot a bunch of Hesperornis and use the organic polymer from them. Now, if you use a wooden club, it actually harvests a lot more organic polymer than uh, any of the tools that I'm using right now. And also, if you have a Pelagornis, which are those big, like, they're like giant pelican birds that are flying around here a lot, those guys actually have a really good gathering rate for organic polymer. So if you get one of those and do what I'm doing, you can actually get a ton of organic polymer from killing off Hesperornis. Now, you probably won't have anywhere near this many Hesperornis on your game. I have a setting for the dinosaur count all the way maxed out. And as far as I can tell on PC, which is what I'm doing the recording on, you get a lot more dinosaurs than spawn in on the Switch version because the Switch just has a really hard time processing so much going on. So it seems to add more, like a lot less dinosaurs than the uh, PC version does. 
And that's also why I record on PC, because the Switch just can't handle the graphic resolution that the PC can. So I'm actually getting better graphics than even a PS4 on these Switch guides. So I've got a huge pile of organic polymer now, and I've killed off a ton of these Hesperornis to get that. And we just got hundreds of cementing paste from those beaver dams, which is probably the fastest, most effective way to get cementing paste. And uh, we also got a whole bunch of silica pearls, like almost a hundred. And that should be enough silica pearls to actually make the electronic system that I made in the last episode that I showed you. So this was basically where I gathered most of the supplies that I was using in the last couple episodes to get all those cool things that we built on the base. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this will let you get a lot more silica pearls and organic polymer and all of that good stuff for your own game and uh, we'll give you more guides on other places to get silica pearls and regular polymer which is from obsidian and uh, we'll kind of get to that later on in the game but I hope this was really helpful for you and if it was please like this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel we have a challenge to reach 1100 subscribers and uh, my wife and I just did a fun video together where she actually played some arc with me and that seems like that was a very big success and a lot of people liked it so we will bring you the second episode of that adventure together if we hit 1100 subscribers so if you have not subscribed yet, be sure to do that. And uh, if you enjoyed watching us play video games together, definitely check out the link in the description to the new YouTube channel that we're doing together where we play a bunch of multiplayer games on Switch and PS4 together. So thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching this video from the ARK Survival Guide. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you more great guides like this one. ARK is an amazing game, but there is so much to learn before you can really enjoy it. We are dedicated to bringing you high quality guides, tutorials, and let's play videos that are fun, helpful, clean, and suitable for the entire family. There is a tutorial in this series for everything we have done so far in this video. Check out these playlists for more episodes from this series and other guides to help you enjoy your journey on ARC.